Welcome everybody to Thought Leader Friday. We are super, super pumped to have our friend, uh, the ever wise Sean Rawls here with us today. And uh, it, he's gonna walk through a number of things related to his perspective, his experience, and also give us a lot of practical advice for how to navigate what we're seeing going on in the market. Uh, as always, I'm joined by my amazing partner, Debbie, and uh, we're gonna be asking some questions to Sean today, and he's gonna run with a number of different topics for us. Uh, so Sean, to get us started, maybe for the folks who uh, don't know you quite so well, uh, who's Sean Rawls? Well, he's a guy that lives in Atlanta uh, that a long time ago started the first Keller Williams office in Georgia. And, um, we built that to, my ex-wife and I built that to be the number one real estate company in Atlanta, and it remains so today. I'm out of operations uh, with that company, and I'm strictly an investor, but um, by the time I had stepped away from my role in that company, we, we had navigated the last economic storm that we all recall, and um, now I, I've written a book, and I do some speaking, and uh, I'm the real estate market is near and dear to my heart, and I have a lot of thoughts and opinions and observations about it based on my sphere and my friends and my uh, peers and coworkers and that sort of thing. So um, once this all started hitting, I thought, you know, I've probably got a, a few stripes of experience that might be helpful for some people that haven't navigated anything like this before and um, might help some people that were maybe remember some of the things that, um, that got them through the last time. Yeah. Well, and uh, we're thankful for you to be able to do that for us. I, I know those of us uh, who were able to spend some time with you as a keynote speaker at our uh, Business Building and Leadership Summit in Raleigh back in October, uh, got to hear a lot of exciting stuff from you, and, and you've had a, a big impact on my life and my business and countless other people. So uh, maybe lead us off, if you don't mind, with just sort of your overarching perspective about what's going on and uh, how it's similar or dissimilar from the last uh, significant economic downturn. Uh, and, and maybe that's an appetizer for today for us. Sure. There's, um, that, there's a lot of meat on that bone. It's, um, you know, first of all, it's different than the last time, right? Um, the last time we were in part as an industry, we were, we were, we were part of the problem that led into it. Um, you know, we were so closely tied to the mortgage industry and what happened with that that um, hand in hand, we were, we were really um, maligned a little bit through that, if not a lot in some cases. Um, but we, we, we had a lot of, um, we had a lot of responsibility as an industry as, as to where that, where that came from. Um, this is different. This is, this is a no fault of anybody's event in the world. Um, different than a 9-11, um, which we, we all lived through and, and led through as well. Um, the, the, the medical nature of this is just, it's, it's new. The fundamentals of what it does to the market, probably not so new, but, the, but, the, but, but fundamentally what this is and how we got here is very different. So I think, you know, it's funny, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of people saying a lot of things. There are a lot of people that want to talk about this. There are a lot of people that are racing to the finish line to be the first to come up with the solution, probably to say, I told you so. Um, but I, I think what most people need to realize is nobody knows what the hell's going on, right? Nobody knows where the hell this is going to end up. Nobody has an answer. We all are clamoring to get a first row seat for the game, but none of us are really on the field. I mean, it feels like we are in some aspects, but not enough to know what's going to happen next. And um, I, I think that's probably, I mean, if there's one thing that I think I would want people to know right now, it's nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. Um, everybody's guessing. Everybody wants to know. Everybody wants someone they know to know. Uh, because there's the, the, the lack of certainty is something that really um, frustrates everybody. And when you're running your own business, particularly a business that uh, where you get paid on results, not by the hour or not by a salary like we are in the real estate business, um, you really want to know. And you, you got to make sure that you, your desire to know doesn't push you into believing or embracing 
uh, somebody just because they sound smart and feel like they have an answer that you haven't heard before, or have an answer that somebody else had, so it must be the same or it must be true. It's, um, I think you really, you would do yourself a favor to say, nobody really knows right now. I mean, we, we don't know how long it's gonna last. We don't know when it's gonna be solved. We know that when it is solved, it'll stop. And we know that life will go on. We just don't know if that's in 30 days and 60 days and three months or six, we don't know. Um, I think there's a lot of effort and a lot of um, interest in getting things back to normal as quickly as possible. I think we've all figured that out. Um, but we just, we don't know. And I think, I think, um, I think what people need to be focused on is what can I do right now? Like, what can I do right now? Like if you had a horrible experience through the last year, scratch it from your memory. Don't, 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 don't bring that th there. Most 99% of what you remember is fear based and is just going to cause an emotion of fear or bring up an emotion of fear and probably paralyzation on your part, uh, paralyzation on your part that you don't need. Um, likewise, if you're looking too far ahead, you're missing an opportunity right now. And I think we got to go back to that three foot rule and go, okay, all I've got is today. All, all I have is right now. So what, if I can't control this thing, if I can't even control the information that's coming at me, if I can't, believe the information I'm hearing with people that are offering solutions or telling me how bad it's going to be or telling me how great it's going to be. None of them know. And let's just assume that none of them know. What I do know is there are things that I can be doing right now that I know if they don't have a short-term impact, they will have a long-term impact. And I think that, um, I think people need to look at their business and go, okay, based on what I know to be true, in my experience, if I just focus on blocking and tackling, I don't have to throw, there's no ESPN highlight reel right now, right? So I, there's nothing I need to be doing to, 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 to make a highlight reel and make a dramatic catch in the end zone. I just need to block and tackle. So what does block and tackling look like right now? Because if I block and tackle really well, I'm hoping that it'll create some short-term momentum and results for me. But more than that, I know that it'll create some long-term momentum and results for me. And maybe you went on both, but you certainly went on the long-term scale. And ultimately, as, 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 as far as that may seem for people, when you say long-term in the real estate world, that seems like forever when you say long-term, um, because people aren't used to thinking that far out. But just realize that long-term can be six months from now. Long-term can be a year from now. Long-term can be a lot longer than that, but long-term can be two months from now. But don't trick yourself into thinking that, I'm going for broke in the short term because we just, we don't know what our short term is. And I think we can define short term as until this thing is resolved. And then long term starts after this thing is over. And who do you need to be contacting? Who do you need to be contacting? What's your message? Um, what's the method for your messaging? And how are you planting seeds that create a harvest for you later? Um, because right now it's, it's, it, there's, there's so much, opportunity to, to, to be the, 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 the real estate agent that cares the most, not the one that sells the most houses. And um, I think you have to lead with care and compassion and concern for the people that um, you serve in a normal, typical market professionally. Um, now you have an opportunity to serve them personally. And when you do that, um, you're going to create years and years and years of client loyalty just by showing up as an awesome human being first and a great real estate professional second. So that's kind of, I, I think it's just a focus on now. I mean, what do you, you guys are coaching people every day? What do you, what are you, what, what are you hearing? Or what, when you, when you finish your day at the end of the day, what's, what's the theme? If you had to wrap up a theme of like the top three words or feelings or concerns that my clients are living with, what, what are they? Maybe you want to grab that one first. Or do you want me to? Sure. Yeah, I think um, when you think about it, it is that future pacing. They're they're questioning how to what is the future going to look like? Like you mentioned, as as we know in real estate, what we do today shows up ninety days from now, right? So they're looking at like you're saying, what do I do today? But how is that going to show up ninety days from now? And I think the other thing that we see quite often is that I, I don't know that it's fear. It's that knee jerk on decision making for 
oh, let me try this or let me try that or where's the easy button or not necessarily easy button, but what's the quick fix? What's the shiny object? Because there's no shiny objects being put out there right now as far as, hey, this will go get you 98% more business, you know? And so for us, it's looking at those knee jerk reactions and then also helping them understand that, like you said, being that good good person in the future or now will we'll lead to that future business. So, you know, I think those are what our clients are coming into these calls with is what does the future look like? Do you think they are, um, do you think they are leading with emotion or do you think they're leading with logic? I think this short into it, it's emotion. Like you said, I because no one knows, no one knows what, what to anticipate. I mean, we went from, um, Valentine's Day, right? Every business as usual to St. Patrick's Day, no green beer, right? So right. Um, it's it, in a very short period of time, everything snapped and everything changed. And so I think that initial is fear and, and that relates to their budgets, that relates to what they're spending money on, how the decisions they're making, do they grow now? Do they hold off on growing? You know, and so emotion would be my answer to that because of the time. I think we're entering that phase now that we're an additional 30 days out to where they're looking at it a little more logically to say, okay, what do I need to have in place? And that's Good. where they're coming from now. Good. Yeah. What about you, Bill? Yeah, I, I, I think we'd see a lot of similarities in, in that. Uh, you know, you and I were talking about this briefly earlier in that a, a lot of the folks that we work with by the nature of working with top agents and top agent teams and uh, leaders of brokerage firms, uh, not really their first rodeo in economic challenges. You know, to your point from the top of the call, a different, a different uh, leading factor into this, yeah, the economic underpinning feels kind of familiar. Uh, so I, I think we are seeing a degree of resilience out of the folks who've been punched in the mouth before. Uh, and then sort of on the macro, not necessarily specific to our clients, on the macro, there's a lot of deer in headlights right now. Uh, folks who weren't in this uh, as we all were in, in the last significant downturn um, and, and maybe their historical perspective only goes back as far as the last one. And, and it's not back to 9-11, not back to the dot-com bubble burst, not back to any other significant historical events. Um, so uh, there's, a, there's an element of resilience that's there. And I think there's also, uh, to your point, I, maybe for all of us, this desire to, to sink our teeth into something timeline related. Sure. So I, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, Sean. So for anybody who's watching this or any of the three of us who are saying, I'm, I'm a little bit of a control freak and this is something that's beyond my control. What's the mindset element of that day to day in, in releasing the desire to control and, and just stick to the blocking and tackling, as you said? So that's a really good question. Um, I, I think there's a lot of things that are going to come out of this, this time, right? Um, and I could list a number of them, but uh, on, a, on a spiritual level, uh, make no mistake about it, I, I, I think we're all supposed to learn something. And whether that's about ourselves or our businesses or our faith or our priorities or uh, our habits, whatever it is, and it may be all of it, but I really think we're all supposed to walk away from this going, ah, I get it. That was a painful way to get it, but I got it. And, um, you know, years ago, there's, a, there's an entrepreneurial school in, uh, in Austin, Texas. I cannot remember the name of it. You might know. Do you know what the name is? It's, a, it's, a, it's an acclaimed school for entrepreneurs. And um, the number one trait that they say of great entrepreneurs, if you want to be a great entrepreneur, the number one trait they found of great entrepreneurs is a high tolerance for ambiguity. And I think the more we want to know, the less we're behaving like a top-notch entrepreneur. Instead of trying to predict things, I think we just have to know certain things to be true and cling to those 
and know that if we do the right things, that the right things will happen, even though we can't really qualify them or quantify them ahead of time. So people that want certainty, I think your lesson may be tough. You're not going to get it. If you want to be certain on something, tell me how many calls you're going to make today. You can be certain about that. Tell me how many people you're going to help today or offer to help today. I think that's certainty. Um, tell me how many hours of sleep you're going to get. Tell me how many hours, what you're going to do for exercise. Tell me what you're going to eat and what you're not going to eat. I think that's certainty right now on some level. And um, when it comes to forecasting certainty, whether it's in a timeline or whether it's in uh, an unemployment number or uh, a number of deaths number or whatever it is number that you're trying to look for for certainty, the only time you're going to be certain of it is when it's passed. So you got to kind of got to get over that a little bit. And, and that may be, that may be your lesson in your journey to do it. But I, I do think that for the people that are deer in the headlights that you mentioned that are, um, that are not as experienced in going through some of these things, I think they need to realize that, you know, if, if they're fortunate enough to be in a coaching relationship with you guys, um, or if they've got somebody in their life that, that where they have anxiety, they have somebody who's a mentor that they truly trust that knows that they're going to look out for their best interests and want what's best for them no matter what, just because of who they are. I think they need to just tighten the, you know, tighten the blinders a little bit and, 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 and really focus on those mentors and say, okay, just tell me what I need to do because here's what, here's what we, um, we did in the last shift. We, we didn't know what we were doing and um, we had never had an economic thing like that since uh, they say the great depression, right? Way before our time. And um, we came up with a term that we called leading with faith at the time. And we weren't talking about religion. We were just saying, we sat down in an office one day and we said, okay, what do we know to be true? What do we believe? Just like what we started out this call, what do we believe are the things that people should be doing that if they do them day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, regardless of what the market is, regardless of what the headlines are, regardless of where the stock market is, that if, what are the actions that they can do that'll make a difference in their business short or for sure long-term. And once we define those things, we said, okay, we're going to have faith that these things are going to show up and they're going to work for us and they're going to make a difference in people's lives. And we're going to run this train right down the track and we are going to run it hard and fast and every day. And we are not going to get off the track. We are going to stay true to what we've just defined as faith-based initiatives that we're going we're gonna to follow from a leadership perspective. And a funny thing happened. When we look back on the time period from when that shift, you know, as you said, everybody got punched in the mouth. By the time everybody came to, our market share had gone nuts. Our people were so far ahead of the curve because of that faith-based uh, belief in what we were talking about and following it and doing it and not finding excuses, but finding reasons and sticking true to our guns. I mean, we, we couldn't believe it. We, we looked up and we were, we literally by 2010, we were the number one company in, in, in Atlanta and we were, you know, going into it. We, we were not number two or three. I don't think um, we were, we were really, we got, we got a lot of steam. And I, the way I explained it was, is if you, um, if you've ever been to the beach and, and you put your towel down and you go into the water and you play for a while and then uh, you decide it's time to get out and you get out of the water and you start looking around and you, you go, who took my towel? And you look around and you realize, oh, nobody took my towel. It's a half a mile up the beach. I just got sucked. I just got sucked along the, the current of the ocean. I didn't even I didn't think I moved at all but I moved a lot. And I think that's the same kind of feeling people are going to have in this business 
if they stay true to the activities and the mindset that allows them to stay focused on what they can control, forget about what they can't, stop looking for certainty when it's not even possible to have it. Not that you don't have it. It's not even possible to have certainty down the road at this point. So forget about it. Don't waste your time on it. Just keep your head down. Do the activities that you know are good for you, personally and professionally, by the way. I mean, we've got a gift. We're all eating home-cooked meals. We're sitting around a table. We're sleeping. Uh, I'm guessing people are getting more sleep than they've gotten in a long time, and the bags under their eyes have diminished. They've got a little bit whatever. I see a Peloton truck around town all over the place, so people are – Peloton's doing well. Um, hopefully, people are keeping the weight off and eating healthy and doing some exercise and just – preparing to play at a higher level, even though we're feeling sidelines. But I think it's no different than, um, hell, it's no different than, than the professional basketball players or all the baseball players or the football players. They can't play either. They're, they can't play the level of play they're playing. But I guarantee you, I can guarantee you this, they're working their asses off right now. They're in the gym at their house. They're running around their neighborhood. They're doing push. They're doing everything they can do, and I get. But they're reading and sleeping and eating and making sure that when the switch does turn back on, they're not playing catch up with their with their fitness, which is their job. And I don't think we should be doing this. I, I don't think we should be doing that either. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I it's it's. I think there's just. I, I think people just need to know that th there are things you can control, and things you should be doing. And if you believe that those are the right things to do, just do them. Do them every day. Tell me how many you're going to do a day. Tell me what numbers you can control and what you're committed to doing. And do it. And see, and, and, let's, and, let's, and if you do that every day for the next six months, regardless of when this thing is up or over, my guess is you're going to have, you're going to be surprised at where your towel is and how far you went would be my guess. Yeah, and creating yeah, good habits as well along the way. Well, a mindset's such a big deal. I mean, you said, um, you said, uh, Debbie, that um, emotion is is kind of a big. I think everybody, if they're honest, I mean, it's funny to see all the memes on Facebook. I get a kick out of them. There, I mean, there's some golly, there's some really good ones out there. But um, and I'm glad, and I hope people keep their senses of humor. <laughs> but on some level, it's masking a little bit of chaos and a little bit of fear. And it's a way to kind of, they're kind of taking some of the uncertainty and the chaos and the craziness and turn it into these funny memes that they can laugh at just to kind of remember where they are. But um, look, we're emotional beings. And I think most people that have a real estate license, probably the vast majority of them are emotionally driven people. And the problem with, it, with being an emotionally driven person is you tend to have a good imagination and that can be good and that can be not good. And as good as it is on the positive side is as bad as it is on the negative side. And you've got to check that. But um, I was telling somebody recently that um, I had a commercial real estate agent when I got in the real estate business, I had a commercial guy take me under his wing and um, one of the best things he ever taught me was in negotiating. He said, um, when, when somebody counters you, you need to first figure out whether it's an emotional objection or a logical objection. And he said, never fight fire with fire. If somebody, if, if somebody objects emotionally, you have to respond logically. And if somebody objects logically, you have to respond emotionally if you want to move the needle at all and it's it, it truly has panned out in my life to be one of the best pieces of advice I ever got because people need to self-check their own level of emotion and logic and realize that if you're leading with emotion and you're having fear or you're in, you're anxious you're worried about things that are not today you're worrying about things that are down the road and you've got to, you've got to cut that emotional um, reaction off at the knees and you have to find a way to logically bring yourself to a place where you can think straight 
and you can think like a leader and you can think like the CEO of your business because CEOs don't think emotionally. They don't think with fear. You know, um, Bill, we, we grew up in, 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 a, in a similar environment and uh, professionally. And um, one of the things that I know we both learned was never make important business decisions out of fear. Never. So if you're like, oh my God, the sky is falling and, you know, what, what, and you're making these, you know, just slicing and dicing decisions just to make yourself feel like you're doing something, but they're not really logically tied, um, you're probably going to regret it, right? Um, I think, you, you, and that's where you guys come in in terms of guiding people to say, eh, if there was a logical side to what you're thinking, what would that look like, right? Um, I just think people people get caught up in the in the emotional side of um, crisis, and 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 instead of trying to figure their own way out of their paper bag, they're waiting for somebody to open the bag for them. And and just it's not that hard. Just think, try to think logically, and, it, and it just, you need people like you guys to remind them how to do that. Well, thank you for your compliment on that. It, it's interesting because it feeds nicely into something that we began sharing with our clients uh, going back probably a month ago now, where kind of the, the thing we put forward, and I'll be brief on this, and then you can kind of fill in some gaps from your thoughts, is really two things in this time. Number one is outthinking the competition. So to your right. point, Sean, sort of slowing down, processing, being really structured about the way that we think and analyze through what's going on. And then number two is outworking the competition, which is the blocking and tackling element of things. Um, so I'd be interested in, and if you want to kind of play off of each of those, uh, if, you, if maybe somebody's watching this and they're saying, I'm, I'm acknowledging now that I'm in a heightened emotional state around what's going on, and I have a desire to be more logical about the way that I'm going to approach things, uh, any insight you might offer that person? Yeah, well, I, I think you have to realize that the people that you're trying to talk to are doing the same thing. I mean, if you think your clients aren't, uh, if, if you're leading a little bit with fear um, and worry or anxiety around housing, you can only imagine what people who are, were thinking about selling their house or thinking about buying a house or having to sell their house or having to buy a house they've got, they're, they're fearful as well because all they're doing is hearing doom and gloom and you turn on the, 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 the your news feed on your cell phone is the real estate market is crashing or, the, you know, this is when you and I both know it's not. It's, it's definitely not business as usual um, and it's definitely not the good old days of real estate but when, if we learned anything in the last shift that lasted forever, mm -hmm. it was people still bought and sold houses. And it was surprisingly at the end of the day, it wasn't all that different from when it was a normal market. Um, all the smoke and mirrors came in by the, you know, the, 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 quintupling of listing inventory on the market it wasn't selling it wasn't that there weren't buyers there just weren't enough buyers to handle that kind of inventory or, or that kind of supply but at the end of the day the normal you know near the normal amount of homes that needed to be bought and sold were bought and sold so um in the midst of all the the smoke and mirrors and pandemonium th th there was a truth and 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 there were real estate sales but Unless you were communicating that, people didn't know it. So, you know, I, I've said, what can you do that would be a great communication tool for your, for your people? And, and, and the simplest thing I think is, you know, we, we all turn on the news every day that the, and, and we watch the, the, the number of new cases of corona. We watch the number of hospitalizations. We watch the number of deaths. Oh, my God, they set a record today. Oh, my God, they set a record yesterday. The number of people who died and what are they doing with these bodies? And oh, my God, and blah, 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 blah. But we all, we're becoming, we're becoming whether, and not that we asked for it. It's because somebody gave us these numbers and said, these are important numbers. And we're, they're so important, we're going to give them to you every damn day. And whether you're paying attention or not, you know what the damn numbers are. 
It's amazing. They're telling us what we need to know. And we're not even going, I got, I'm going to, I need to, I'm going to, I got to practice these numbers. I got to memorize these numbers. And it's like, no, you don't. They're just giving them to us every day. We figure it out. It's osmosis. We've got it. Somebody needs to do the same thing to your real estate database, right? Let me show you the numbers that are important. Last week, we had 672 new listings hit our MLS. Last week, we had 210 listings go under contract. And last week, we closed, our MLS closed 179 properties on, you know, by the time the week was over. This week, here are the numbers. It's more than last week. It's less than last week. This one's up. This one's down. And if you're, if you're giving new listings, under contracts, and solds, you're doing new cases of corona, hospitalizations, and deaths. It's the same damn thing. You just have to give it out every day. And all of a sudden, people realize you've got a client at the grocery store that goes, hey, I didn't realize that, you know, 179 houses closed last week. That's crazy. I thought it just, everything was at a, I heard everything was at a standstill. It's like, oh my God, I didn't hear that. Where'd you hear it? Um, and, and you become the voice of reason in logic, not emotion, that lets people know, hey, it's, we're still doing it, but we're doing it different. I'm going to list your house this way on a Zoom call. And I'm going to have an open house this way on a Zoom call. And I'm going to have a buyer consultation this way on a Zoom call. In fact, I've got a buyer seminar I'm going to do. I've got 30 people signed up for a Zoom call on Thursday night. If you'd like to, to sit in and have my buyers uh, go through my buyer seminar, we're going to do it. All. You can sit in your living room in your pajamas. I don't care. I'm going to be in mine. And I'm going to give you everything that you, you need to know about buying and selling a house as it relates to the current market. And I'm going to give you statistics. And I'm going to give you strategies. And I'm going to tell you what's working and what's not. And tune in. And all of a sudden you've got, that's something you can control and that's something you can, you can do. And I guarantee you when all this is over, it's those, it's this thing we're doing right now. If there's one thing that comes out of this, that's a mind blowing change in the real estate business, it's going to be, this is this virtual thing will not stop. The, the, the best people in our business are, have, have already figured out, dang, I can have, I can have meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting and I don't have to race because I'm late and spill Coke in my lap in my car. I can just, I don't have to eat French fries at 75 miles an hour getting to the next one to hold me up. I'm right here. I'm right here. I can be more productive right here than I can ever could have ever been going from one to the, but here's the deal. We would have never done this if it weren't for Corona. We would have never said, you know what, I'm going to take my business virtually. Screw all this real stuff. I'm just going to, I'm going to be the guy that goes virtual with, I'm going to do virtual seminars. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a Sunday open house. I'm going to do it on, online. People would be like, you've lost your mind, Bill Middleton. What the hell is wrong with you? But guess what? It's going to be business as, as the new normal when all this come, when all this is over. And I think that's what you can't let people forget, particularly for you guys as coaches what's changing that's going to make you better? What's changing that's going to make you more profitable? What's better that's going to make you more efficient? What's better that's going to make you more balanced as a human being and a professional? I mean, we're a business that's been notorious for, for people being chain smoking, alcoholic, divorced, whatever, because they're working their asses off and, and their priorities are all out of whack. And guess what? Everybody's doing everything and juggling everything in a balanced fashion in their own home right now. And it's got to feel pretty good on some level. Now, granted, we all want to get the heck out of here um, from time to time. But, at the, but, but truth be told, I, there are very few people, I think, that would say this has not been a gift on some level. Well, you make a really good point. And Debbie, I'm going to hand it to you for a, a follow-up question to Sean is um, – I think we were all headed this direction anyway, and at some point, and it might have been two years or five years down the road or wherever, and, and this has been a gift for us because it's given us the force, the mass force adoption of this on the consumer side of things. So the consumer is now beginning to buy into all of this, which just makes it easier for us to deliver this to them in something that now feels familiar because they didn't really have a choice. They're having to do it for their own 
jobs or they're homeschooling their kids over it or whatever it is. So this, this rapid forced mass adoption, uh, I, I think gives us a lot of legs underneath this in the short term. Oh my gosh, it's huge. I mean, can you think about just people going, you mean I can, I can, I can list my house or I can sell my house and I don't have to let you or anybody else in it. Mm -hmm. Or at least not in it over and over and over or on a whim or without notice or with one hour notice or what I mean, it's, I, I, there are so many, it's going to be fun to watch the value pitches that come out of this Mm -hmm. to make people realize what a great gift this has given our industry, whether you're an agent or somebody wants to sell your house or somebody wants to buy your house or, or buy a house going down the road. I mean, it, it's, it's this technological um, fast forward, if you will, is I think it's going to make our industry a lot more fun and a lot less stressful for everybody involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a fun thing to, to think about, too, as we get further into the future. I mean, the, the next thing that we see in this and who knows how far off it is, is uh, virtual reality or augmented reality. When, when there's mass adoption of that, people start viewing houses with their Oculus headsets on from their couches and play it like a video game. That's going to the first movers in that game as polished listing agents and marketers are going to totally change the landscape of this thing. Uh, we're probably not very far off from that would be my guess. I mean, I'm sure people are already thinking about it or how to develop it anyway. Sure. But no, you're right. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a game changer. We're, 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 our game is being changed, not just temporarily, but um, forever um, on some levels. Um, and I think most of the things that stick are going to be things that were the, the gifts that came out of it. Um, the, anything that people are complaining about, that stuff will go by the wayside. But all the stuff that um, all the stuff that's good or gift oriented is going to stick, I think. Sure. Yeah. So Attorney, what else? Attorneys and title company uh, closers can go back to their offices and not stand in the parking lot. I'm sure they'll be grateful for that. Yes, and, I'm sure. And, and for Zoom, my request would be if anyone's listening, a scratch and sniff button just as I'm doing my listing presentation. So I know, am I getting Pier 1 or am I getting the old Jane Smoker's house? That would, that would be uh, virtual, right. very helpful, right? <laughs> right. That would be good. Um, one thing I've heard you say a couple of times, the power of growth and taking market share. So, you know, when we look at today's industry and, and the fact that we coach several large teams, Um, that how do we get them to that logical place of continuing to grow and continue to take market share, be it through market share or growing of their team versus that natural instinct of, oh, shoot, I should push the brakes. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, Because I think as a good business person, you know, now, you know, usually we don't, our big excuse is we don't have time, right? We don't have enough time to, you know, I'll do, when I get some time, I'll look at that. Or when I get some time, I'll, I'll do that. Or, but now we, in all honesty, we, we've been given some time, right? So um, there are some things that you can do productively. And, and one of them is just do a little audit of your business, figure out where your, where your money is generating um, joy and happiness for you where your money is generating a return on investment for you, where your money is creating a uh, open back door for you, where it's just, you know, sifting away or sliding away and there's no return, no joy, no, why are we spending this money? Because I don't really like what it's doing and I don't really get that much out of what we're paying for. Um, And I think we look at, you know, where are the easy places that we can, um, make some cuts to our, to our businesses and our households that, uh, what did we think? Is there anything that we thought was a necessity that, you know, now that we're in this situation, we're realizing maybe it's not so much of a necessity. Um, but I, I don't think it's about hitting breaks. I think it's again, logically going through and saying, all right, does this work? Does this not, you know, do we keep it or not? Do we keep, and I think it's just the equivalent of cleaning out your closet and going, ah, I love that shirt. And your wife goes, yeah, well, it's time for it to go, right? Um, so that's that's okay. But I think that um, I think you do have to realize that hitting the brakes is uh, there's a time for it and there's a time not to do it. And um, pumping your brakes is one thing; just don't stand on them. 
right? Um, and realize that we're going through a curve. And um, it's a curve that we just, we just like if you're driving in your car and you, you're, you're doing, you know, 60 miles an hour and you're coming into a curve that you can't see on the other side, your tendency is to hit the brakes, right? Um, but if you know anything about driving, you, you realize that hitting the brakes going into the curve is really the wrong time to hit your brakes. Um, you have to coast into the curve, and once you're into the curve solidly, then you accelerate out of the curve. The brakes are, 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 are very rarely used if you're driving appropriately in a curve, and I love that analogy because I think in business we hit a curve and, and, and the tendency is to hit a brake just like we would in a car. And it's just because you can't see it doesn't mean you're supposed to stop. That's what stop signs are for. You're just supposed to just let off the gas and coast and observe. Be an observer for a minute. You don't have to be a balls to the wall, going to rip it through it as fast as you can like you maybe were last week or last month or last year. It just, this may be a time, just take your foot off the gas, don't have to hit the brake, but just pay attention. Pay attention to yourself, pay attention to your business, pay attention to your environment. What is, what are, how are you communicating? What's your message? What's the method of your message? Is it working? Put everything under the microscope, but don't hit the brakes and don't hit the gas if you're not comfortable, but follow your gut. But if your gut is hit the, slam on the brakes, that's probably not the right there's probably another choice to that that I think would be more prudent as a business leader. Um, tap them maybe, tap them, but don't stand on the brakes and, and try to resist the urge to do that. You don't have to kill it yet, but let's, let's, let's take a little time and be perceptive and let's take a little time to evaluate. And let's take a little time to just assess everything that we're dealing with, where we're spending our money, where we're spending our time, who we're supporting, who we're not supporting, what we want to do, what we want to capture, and are we doing the things that we believe we're going to do that? And if, if we can't even define that, let's define those things and let's have our own faith-based leadership program and let's just, let's hit the gas on those things so that we come out of this thing as, with as much acceleration as we need to have. Yeah, you make a great point there in the leading with faith, um, because that was something else I noted. I, I, I believe many of our leaders are confident in what they're doing and, and the bus that they're driving and how they're getting to where they're going. And there's still uncertainty, right, as you mentioned earlier. So how do they continue to lead their people with faith when they're, they're, they too are struggling with that uncertainty? yet want to project the message of, like you said, just go do the right things and, and the best will show up. Well, here's where, um, here's where integrity and authenticity and vulnerability collide, right? Um, it's, it's times like this that real leaders show up and real leadership is revealed for what it is. So it's easy to lead when things are good, right? Everything's good when things are good. Everybody looks like a rock star when things are good. A tailwind makes the plane, every plane fly, fly, fly faster, right? Even the bad planes fly faster with a tailwind. Um, now you've got some turbulence. So it's really important if you have a team if you have a company that's relying on your leadership, go back to the, big, to the beginning of this call. You have to be honest. And you, 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 this is a time where people are going to call complete bullshit on you as a leader. If you are anything other than authentic and, 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 and vulnerable and real. And if there's one thing I would be communicating right now as a leader if, in my organization, it would be, Nobody knows where this is going. Nobody knows. I don't know. I would love to know. I would love for somebody I see on TV to know. I would love to see somebody on a podcast know. I would love to know that somebody knows what the hell they're talking about. But right now, nobody knows. And so we're going to, here's my plan, right? My plan is I'm going to attack what we don't know 
this way because I have defined that there are certain things that we can control and we do know, and we're just going to stay focused on that. And we're not going to worry about the things we don't know and we don't control. And here's my commitment to you as my team. Here's what you can count on in me as a leader. I will always tell you the truth. I will always tell you this. I'm, I'm not going to cut people from our roster unless it, I absolutely positively have to. I'm not going to, whatever it is, you need to think about it as a leader. What do you want to be able to, if you had to stand in front of your people, and you should, and say, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you can count on from me. Here's what I need from you. Even if it's stop listening to stupid people, I need you to stop listening. To, I, do not get caught up in sensationalism, journalism, anything. We, if there's something important, let's talk about it. If there's something you're concerned about, it, bring it up to the table and let's talk about it. Let's create an open dialogue. But do not take anything that anybody says as gospel, if, particularly if they're telling you how things are going to be at the end of this, because nobody knows. And I've seen it a million times where maybe things are not great in the world, but in our world, we did the right things and we ended up okay. And so regardless of where the world goes, I'm going to guide our sled dog team this way, and this is how we're going to get through the storm, and this is where I'm shooting to lead us, and I need your support to do it, and I need your trust to do it, and I need your confidence in me to do it, and I need you to be able to communicate with me to do it. Everybody's got a potential answer. Everybody's got a potential solution. Nobody's off the table. There's no rankings. There's no titles. There's no nothing. Everybody is important in this thing, and just go to your people and be a leader. Be a leader. Put it out there. But don't put it out there like you're Nostradamus. Put it out there like you're a real person and you're taking your responsibility as a leader seriously. And you're going to be as honest and authentic and as real as you can possibly be through this entire thing. And that's all you know to do. And if that's good enough for them, stay. And if it's not good enough for them, leave. And I would be, I think I would just, I think that's the, I think that's the dialogue I would have. Yeah, thank you for that. No? So let's, let's build on that for just a second. Maybe we'll go maybe another five or 10 more minutes here, Sean. Uh, let's sure. say, uh, let's say I'm watching this video and I, I run a team and I buy into that advice that you're offering there and I'm doing that. And I have some team members who aren't bought into that who aren't bought into the get up every day, put your boots on, block and tackle, keep your mindset right. Um, I guess two, two questions in this, how would you uh, coach or lead or guide those team members to rise up? And then if they don't, then what? Uh, I think that's what you have to decide as a leader, right? I mean, you or I can't tell somebody how to handle that, but, but, but I can tell somebody that, um, there's nothing wrong with saying it's all hands on deck. And if you can't give me a hundred percent, I can't give you a hundred percent. Right. We have, this is, we are, we are interdependent, interwoven in this, in this fight. And the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because I believe I've got a team of people who I can rely on to get where we want to go. So if you, if you're having issues with that, come talk to me. Right. Or if there's somebody you know is having issues with that that wouldn't come talk to you, go to them in private and have a fierce conversation. Not, not, a, not, a, not a confrontational conversation. Just have a real conversation with somebody that says, look, I, I'm, concerned about, I'm concerned about you. And I'm not concerned about you in a negative way. I'm concerned about you because I really need you and I really believe in you. And you have to, you have to, help, you have to assume just like your clients, that they're scared, right? They're scared for their job. They're scared for whatever. They're scared. They're scared. So if they're scared, you've got to bring, again, you've got, that's emotion. You've got to sit down with them and create some logic around their reality that helps them go, you know what? Thank you for talking to me. I, I, I will be better, and I will do that, and you can count on me for that. And, and, and don't end the conversation without going, can I count on you? and make them own it. And if they're not, you're going to know that they're not. 
but it's, it's, look, it's tough. I mean, if you're going to make the commitment not to cut people, um, and that was one of the commitments we, we made in the last shift with our organization. We said our, our, our goal, I can't promise at this juncture because, again, I don't know, so I want to be careful how I say it, but our goal is we do not want to lose one support person for your business. So the, what, what you're used to coming into the office and dealing with on a daily basis, our goal is to keep all of that intact. And we had companies that were firing, you know, receptionists that had been there for 20 years that people were freaking out. You could just hear they were devastated. And we were like, we're not going to be that company if we can at all help it. And we didn't. We never let anybody go. But um, we had to get people on board. And we had to... Um, we just we, we 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 had to have some fierce conversations as a group, and we had to have some fierce conversations individually. Um, kind of what I'm talking about, just to make sure that people knew, look, I'm serious. This is my commitment, but I can't have that commitment for people who aren't as committed on the other end. Like I want to keep everybody that wants to stay. I want to keep everybody that wants to play. And here's and here's what I need from you to help me keep my promise there. Because I think people, I think people get into, well, the what's in it for me channel, right? You know, well, what's, what's, um, what's, what, what am I going to get out of it? And what are you going to do for me? It's like, oh, well, you're going to keep your job. First of all, that's, that's a big one in this market. If you're not watching the news, that seems to be a big one. Right. And I'm, I'm committed to doing everything I can to do that. But I only am going to do that for people that appreciate it and are going to, work harder during this time than you did before as a reward for that. Right. And I, I don't, I don't think it's a hard, I, I, I although I say, I don't think it's a hard conversation. It's, that's not a hard conversation for me to have with people because it's just a real human conversation. Some people that are leading teams, that's not natural for them. And they're, 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 they're not great at those things. And they might not be really good at being vulnerable or authentic or real. Um, in which case I would point them back to you as their coach and go, let's role play that conversation with Sally, you know, cause here's what I, when I saw her today, here's what I wanted to say. And you go, well, you might not want to tell her she's not holding up to her into the bargain and she's disappointing you. That's probably not the good lead in for that. Right. <laughs> um, but I think you can help people with that. And you probably know who's natural with that and who's not, but I think those conversations are, you know, again, I, I think one of the opportunities in this market right now is improving your leadership skills. I mean, it, it is improving. I mean, this is a time to vision cast. This is a time to really share what your, your commitment to your team is and prove it. Um, don't go silent and don't pretend it's business as usual and don't don't brush things under the rug in a, in a global sense of your business. Um, Put everything out there. Be authentic. Be vulnerable. Be real. Um, but let them. And if you do that, you're going to you're going to let them. They're going to know that you care without you having to tell them. They're just they know that it's an integrity based leadership moment for people, and it's an opportunity for people to really step up their their, their own level of leadership with their team and create a buy in um, in the trenches. That, that, that they wouldn't have had the opportunity to have if this wasn't here. Sure, sure. I think you make a great point on a, an opportunity for all of us to polish up on some things, to implement some new things. Uh, Debbie, any final questions for Sean, and then we'll get some parting thoughts from him. Yeah, I have one quick question. So you mentioned at the top of the call that you've written a book. And so I'd love to hear maybe one of the concepts, just give us a little sneak peek um, that may apply to those in this this market, and I know it's not out yet, but a little information. It's not out. It was going to be out uh, in a month, but we've uh, pushed the date back, and I don't know what I don't know what the date is, but it's probably going to be first quarter of next year. It's it's sounding like, but we'll see. Um, but the book is called Effortless, um, and it's 18 F words to reframe and repurpose your life, and um, it it kind of came about with. You know, most people back into change by saying F it, um, and, and they, they, which means they end up just kind of give up or give in to something. And that's when you think about change, most people 
dislike it unless you're the person who's calling for it, right? Like if you say, as the leader, you say, hey, we're going to change the way we're going to do our listing presentations. You're like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. But everybody else on your team is going, oh, crap, I don't want to do that. And so they just fight it and fight it and fight it until they say F it, right? So effortless is about living your best life. And it's about realizing that change is a good thing if you architect it and to really focus on the architecture that, that you need. So we come up with a bunch of different F words, whether it's flex or forgive or faith or fix, um, family. There's just 18 of them. They're, they're, it's really, um, they're fun. But one of the things, here's a parting thought, because one of them is uh, in the final chapter of the book, there is a quote that says, we are all just walking each other home. And I had a friend of mine, one of my best friends called me one day, he went to a funeral uh, for somebody that uh, was an ex client of mine, uh, in a in a client of his in his business. And, and we, we had a he was a acquaintance in common. And he went to his funeral, I didn't go. Uh, but he said, he said, I got to call you. I wanted to call you because the in the funeral, there was uh, the 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 preacher said something that I'd never heard before. And he said, we're all just walking each other home. And he said, the whole theme of the funeral, uh, the memorial service was, we're all just walking each other home. And he said, you know what? He said, I just thought we are, we're, I'm walking you home. You're walking me home. We're all walking each other home. And um, I'd never, ever, ever heard that quote before. And it's actually a famous quote, but once I, once I researched it, um, but two weeks later, Jerry and I were looking for a, a beach, a vacation beach rental property in Florida. And, um, we looked at a number of properties in a, in a day with, in this development we were interested in. And, uh, we got to this, this one property and, and there was a bookshelf outside of the master bedroom in this one place. And it had a spray painted, a spray painted brick sitting on the shelf. And the brick was engraved with, we're all just walking each other. And I thought, well, I guess I know which property we're buying. Um, this is, you know, I usually say, you know, just send me a sign, Lord, preferably in English. Well, I, he sent a freaking brick, right? So I was like, I, I don't think I, that was a burning bush if I ever had one. But it's true. We're all just walking each other home and we're all doing our part to kind of get everybody where they need to go. And it's calls like this and it's relationships like you guys would have with your people that we're all interconnected and we're all doing our part to help the world be a little better place and people be a little happier and a little more productive and a little more profitable. And um, if, if there's anything that we take away from this, it's that regardless of what's being said, out there, the actions that we take and the mindset that we have has an impact on other people. And there was a book a long time ago called The Butterfly Effect, right? That the flap of butterfly wings can cause a, a, a tsunami on the other side of the world once it gains steam. And I think we have to realize that we have to be carriers of um, logic and carriers of optimism and carriers of uh, resiliency in the marketplace so that we don't let the doom and gloom and, 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 and the naysayers and the people who really don't know what they're talking about override our thought process of it's going to be okay it's going to be okay um, we don't know when it's going to be the way we want it to be but it's going to be okay and we just have to focus on what we want to focus on whether it's our mindset and our actions or both to make sure we're getting there and help other people do the same great thank you that's great. Uh, well, Sean, I want to wrap up with this by uh, not only thanking you, also echoing something that you likely know that you do that's a big gift to other people, uh, and that is allowing them to collectively uh, take both a mental deep breath and a physical deep breath to kind of pull back and really gain perspective about what's going on and then simplify the actions and the course moving forward. So uh, you and I have known each other a long time and every time I've seen you speak or hear you speak, uh, that's been the, the common thread for me. And I, I think you've yet again delivered that to the folks who uh, have the opportunity to watch this. So, well, um, I appreciate it. You're, you're, you, you guys are both awesome. And I, I, I was really tickled to be a part of your event in, uh, in North Carolina this year or last year and 
Um, I love what you're doing. I, I, I love who you are as people and as coaches and the people that are in relationship with you are lucky to have you. And um, I'm, I'm lucky to count you as friends in my life. So um, it's, I, I really appreciate the invite and I hope I've made a little bit of a difference for somebody out there listening. If I have, it's all been worthwhile. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Sean. We love you, buddy. See you next time. Hey, love you too. Take care. Everybody. See you. Bye. Bye.